Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Dennis Ngango, and today's special guest is an industrial engineer turned entrepreneur, and now the author of a book titled, Millionaire at 20. Hi, Dennis. It's great to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited to be having this conversation with you. I think we all want to know the tricks to being a millionaire and just get some of your experience, I think. Okay, be great. Cool. Yeah, let's so, do I want to dive right in. Okay. A lot of us growing up have this aspiration of, you know, having that Merc, having that AMG, mm. have these big dreams, you watch MTV Cribs, mm. and we see the mansion, we're like, even me! But then, <laughs> when was that moment where it became a real attainable goal for you? First things first, like yeah. the mercs and the watches and that stuff. If you're focusing on that, you'll never get to the point mm. where it's like attainable. Yeah. Because you, you need to focus on your passion and what you want to do. Yeah. Um, it needs to be something that you will do even if you don't receive any income for it. So yeah, the focus is to establish yourself as financially independent, work towards that goal. Yeah. But, the, but the main goal should always be to live life. Um, because it is tough when, yeah. when you start on this journey there will be months with no income there yeah. will be months with um, bills that needs to be paid and there's no income there yeah. to do that so then you need to have that passion yeah. and that drive to, yeah, to, to work late hours to work late nights and then the other stuff like the watches and the MGs and stuff just oh, comes yeah. along you know, but so. when was that moment for you where you were like I can I can I can actually do this. <laughs> well, I, I still actually live very conservative. Um, I try to keep all of my my investments going, so I, I still don't buy you know mm. a lot hey, of but expensive I mean, stuff. Not in terms of necessarily having those big things, but when did you realize I can actually? Do I think this? where I cov- when I covered my first property, when my first property and that was were, were in... paid off, uh, that was uh, I think 2015, 2015. And then when did you first? When did you get the first property? I bought the first properties in my first year. How? Which was, I, I heard this in which the was 20, <laughs> 2012. It was 2012. Yeah. And then I paid it off in 2015. So then at that stage, it was like, okay. Yeah. You know, You're things, getting somewhere. But how things it, are starting to happen. How did you... You know, a lot of us <laughs> weren't even reading about financial concepts then. How in um, first year were you so head on with... 18, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 19. 19. I'm born in 1992. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So, throughout high school, throughout primary school, ever, forever, I had a lot of businesses and things that I did. So, I always had businesses, side hustles, and with that... Painting people's, you know, street numbers, That's what... That that thing stuck. Like, it was in the first newspaper. I told them, like, this is what me and my brother do. But it worked. And then from there on, like, every channel I'm on or whatever, they always do <laughs> that. Um, yeah, so, so I, I generated a lot of capital through all of the other, other small businesses. Yes. Okay? And then um, another thing that helped me was in high school, in the beginning, in, in, in start of high school, I told my dad, look, um, I'm going to study real hard, and if I get a bursary, I would like to keep the money from the bursary. So, so you had this conversation with your dad? Yes, I told him like, look, I'm going to get my marks up. Yeah. And if I get a bursary, I would like to invest that money. But I mean, there must be something remarkable about you and your train of thought. You will already be having conversations like that. Exactly, at that, at, time. At, at that stage. So, so at that stage, I had this mindset about growing business, growing small businesses, mm-hmm. reaching to that property goal. because That was my goal, to get yeah. my first property. And then at that stage, in the beginning of matric, other kids were thinking about matric holiday and that type of stuff. I was thinking about getting my marks there so that I can get some funding from elsewhere. Because, you know, inside the family, you know, we needed needed some money. Okay, so so what I did is I worked really hard. I didn't take June, July holidays. I got, eventually I got the bursary. So, so with the bursary, that was a, a small amount, and then with the with the businesses, which was a bigger amount, I got a quite um, good deposit to put down on a house. Okay. And but then, I, <laughs> and then I, but from, I'm still mind blown about the fact that you were so forward thinking. You know, the fact that you were so dedicated and so driven. Is it something that came from your parents that they instilled those values in you guys, or do you just think? 
you read a lot or where does it come from? That's <laughs> well, my question. Well, I'll say all credit to, to my parents for teaching me when I was young that you have to work hard for what you need yeah. to receive. I didn't get allowance, okay, everyone. I didn't get any allowance when I was when I was small because um, my dad just said, "Well, if you want money for the shop at the school, you need to work for it." Yeah. So I always tell people we had a barometer on my closet door, and then if I did something good or if I did something great, we could fill it in. When I was real, real small, and then when the barometer was filled up, we could go to the yeah. store and, and get a toy. So. Um, they always said, look, we need to grow, we need to. Um, in my family, I always tell this story as well, my great-great-grandfather literally worked on the road, you know, in and, 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 and very poverty state, you know, he worked with a shovel in the road, and my grandfather then drove the tractors and stuff. And my father eventually had the opportunity to go to Technicon, not to university, there wasn't enough funds for that. So he went there and he got his B-Tech, and then eventually I was able to go to university and, and throughout the family from, from a state, from a low state, there was always this growth and yeah. saying like, look, we need to move a step forward each generation. I saw my dad grinding, um, working 10 hours a day, every day, coming home tired yeah. and I just decided that's not the life that I would like to live. Yeah. I would like to be financially independent. I would like to tour the world and change the way people think and work with people. And, and your first stop was getting that bursary. That was first yeah. stop and then and the then second one was getting the property and the second one was getting more properties and growing and growing. So yeah. eventually you can be financially independent so you can live your dream and do what you want to do. So being financially independent, is that what drove you to writing the book? Uh, yes, well, well, um, Helping other people yeah. to be financially independent is what drove me to write the book. Yeah. Um, I had friends that was much older than me when I was like 20, 21. I had friends that was 30, 35 and they would tell me, look, um, you're telling me about your properties, you're telling about me about your businesses. If I knew these things when I was 20 or yeah. 21, if I knew how to do this, my life would have been completely different. Because now, and that's the, that's the thing, people get stuck in a day job and then they, they use all of their monthly salary to pay for the new yeah. car that they have or the new house. And then um, they say, okay, well, I'll get, well, at varsity, students say, look, I'll get more money when I start working. Then when they get into the day job, they have other stuff that they need to pay, yeah. like rents and cars. So then they say, okay, well, I'll get more money when I get that raise. And then when they get that raise, they get married or you know start a family. So and then they say, okay, now I'll get more money when I get that promotion. Thing, yeah, so. uh, but it never does. And and these people are, are then stuck in this kind of um, trend where, uh, as their income increase, their expenses always just keeps on increasing, and they can't get out of it. So I'm saying like. You need to focus on the right financial concepts, yeah. the right techniques. To and that's what is in <laughs> financially independent. Book, yeah. yeah. So, what one tip could you give to a young aspiring entrepreneur right there? The first tip is if you get any money with your hustle, like mm -hmm. if you're not an entrepreneur with your business, if you receive any income, don't waste it. Yeah. It's so valuable at that stage. Um, to, to use what you have and to try and invest that to move yourself forward because if you if you get a, a, a small amount of income and you just use that you're at the same place yeah. than you were yesterday but if you use it more more um, clever and invest it and keep on driving yourself forward then you can actually grow what would you say is the best strategy for people with little starting capital or little or no money in terms of investing yeah in terms of okay well there's there's a few i mean there's a few if you if you're talking about let's say you have 100 rand or something then i would say you can try to invest in yourself for example and try and grow a skill for example i gave guitar lessons throughout high school yeah and I, and I gave um, tutoring lessons throughout high school and throughout varsity and I actually made a decent income mm -hmm. from giving guitar lessons and tutoring lessons. So I mean if, if you have a skill that you can sell yeah. to someone else. So if I had like 500 rand 
I would go and play guitar lessons with that 500 grand. So now I know how to play guitar. guitar yeah. And then I can use that mm. and sell that over and over again. Mm. And I can give lessons to five people a day for 100 grand. So I can grow that. Yeah. So if you don't have a lot of money, try to invest in yourself and try to um, up your skill level or up your knowledge. And then from there, with that new knowledge that you've gained or that new skills that you've gained, you can then achieve more yeah. and do more things. What uh, books would you say have shaped your sort of thinking? Wow, there's a lot, eh? Um, I would say what books I read, my first book uh, was a book from um, Maxwell um, that my dad gave me. It was about leadership yeah. and just changing the oh, way. I started leadership. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and then my second book was Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's also a good one, yeah. yeah that's a good, that's a classic. It's about, you know, passive income, that type of stuff. And then from there, the list just goes on. I'll say good books is uh, Rules of Wealth. Um, I think three is good, and then, of course, your book. Yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, I, think, I think this one is much thinner. Yeah. Then the other ones is quite thick. And, uh, and the thing is, I think people can relate to this one. The other one is written by, you know, Americans that's already much, much older, older, like 60 yeah. or something, and they, have, they already have like a billion dollars in the bank. I want to ask though, on a more personal note, how do you, how do you maintain that willpower to keep on going when it's such a lonely experience? Well, I would say that ideal, that um, ideal that you have passion for, because motivation is temporary. Yeah. I mean, I do, I do use a lot of motivational videos and quotes and stuff every morning when I get up just to get yourself psyched and in that energy state. But it's temporary. It dims down as soon as the first bad thing happens for the day yeah. or as soon as you get tired or whatever. Um, what keeps you going is that passion for that ideal that you have. Um, my ideal is to be able to be financially independent, to tour the world, to help people um, with these concepts, yeah. to, to start a movement where people can become financially free and to help people free themselves from this financial change that people find themselves in. When they say, I don't know what to do, I can't go anywhere, I'm stuck at the end of the month. So that's my ideal. If you have an ideal of becoming the number one um, 100 meter athlete in the world, yeah. That is something that will make you stand up earlier than when I always say that 100 meter athlete's goal is to knock a second of that 10 second sprint. Yeah. And when he wakes up, he thinks about that second. When he decides what to eat, he thinks about yeah. that second. When he decides when to go to sleep, he thinks about that second. So, so that's what keeps you going, that passion, that ideal that you have. And also educating yourself more about that idea as well, so mm. it becomes more attainable, more realistic, you know? It becomes what you think about all the time, and therefore you will automatically educate yourself more yeah. about that. That 100 meter athlete thinks about that all the time. Mm. So everything he does, everything he looks at, when you watch YouTube videos, you watch videos about other athletes that have done that. So, so everything, your whole life becomes towards that goal that you want to live, that ideal life that you want to, yeah. to live. Yeah. So now where can everybody find the book, get their hands on it? They can get it on www.millionaire22.com. Yeah. It's in hard copy or ebook format and we're also on Facebook and Instagram. Hashtag Millionaire22. It's your boy Dennis and Gango. This is Albert van Veek. Make sure to check out their social medias, get behind uh, the book. Also, there's other interviews that you've been doing of recent, which I saw. And yeah, just make sure to like this video, comment, and let us know what you think. Thank you, Dennis. Awesome. Great. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a chilled millionaire, guys. Let's talk about this. He has his snapback, he has his black shades, his jersey. So chilled.